Hey guys, it's Robin Arzon and Crafts and welcome to my craft room. I had a request to show how, if I could show how to make an infinity scarf and add a zippered pocket to it. I've never made an infinity scarf before, but I've made zipper pouches, so I thought, why not? I'll give it a try. I've gone ahead and I've made it. This was my first one. I've added the nice little zipper pouch with this fun pink elephant fabric. I thought that was a fun little surprise to go with the pink plaid. I'm gonna show you how you can do it and have no hand stitching, or if you prefer to go ahead and have a little bit of hand stitching, but we've just gone ahead and sewed these all together nicely. So there you go. Now all you're gonna need for this is if you buy two yards of fabric, you'll be able to make two infinity scarves from it because we need to split it down from the lengthways so that your each of yours are gonna be half of the width of fabric. So if you buy cotton fabric and it's 42 inches, it'll be 21 inches about by your two yards, which would be 72. Now you can use different fabrics for this. I've gone ahead and chose to use this woven. I believe it's some type of a cotton. I'm not really sure what fabric this is, but there's a variety you can use. You can use flannel. If you choose to use flannel, you're gonna to want to go ahead and wash it first, because if anyone's worked with flannel before, you know how it shrinks up and in different directions and everything like that. So you wanna go ahead and give it a good bath and run it through the dryer first so that you don't have any problems and anything getting all uh, miscued and stuff like that. I chose to use this plaid fabric for mine because I thought this was a really fun fabric. I did have to line up the plaid when I was stitching it together but it wasn't too bad to go ahead and do in the different places. Everything worked out reasonably well. Not perfect, but it's okay. It worked out pretty good. This is going to be wrapped around your neck a couple times. This makes great gifts. If you go ahead and start making these now, you can go ahead and make a bunch of them in plenty of time for Christmas this year. So let's go ahead and get started. So you're gonna to wanna to start out by choosing your fabric. Now, before anyone asks, I do not know exactly where this fabric came from. I know where it came from. I believe the lady who gave it to me bought it at Joann's because that's where most of her fabric came from. This is something that my previous neighbor had given to me. They moved away maybe six or eight years ago. She had purchased this to make a skirts for her daughter. Her daughter is now uh, married. She is a teacher and she has two children. So that kind of shows you how long ago that this was purchased. So I don't know if you can still find it at Joann's or anywhere else, but it's a really pretty plaid. I love the grays with the nice fun pink against it like that. You can use anything you want for your infinity scarf, basically. I mean, maybe not anything, I wouldn't choose probably a denim, because remember, you're gonna wrap this around your neck twice. So you can use a rayon or some type of a blend. You can use quilting cotton, you can use wool. A lot of people choose to use flannel because that's a nice warm, fabric with not a lot of weight to it and that's always going on sale at Joann's at a variety of times. Fleece is probably going to be too thick and too heavy because as I said you're going to have to twist it around your neck but if you want to just make a one loop around you can use whatever you want. This is going to be your infinity scarf. You choose the material that you're going to use for the season that you're going to use it in. So if you're going to use it in summer maybe you want to go for more of a silk or rayon or the quilting cotton. If you want it for the winter, move on more towards a wool or a flannel. The next thing you're gonna need is you're gonna want a zipper. I pulled out a couple choices. I could use this gray zipper that's going to blend in nicely and it's not gonna make the pocket noticeable. Or I can go ahead and use this pink one. Now, if it was to be laying on this spot right here, then it's going to blend in with everything else and it's going to match up with the pink. So it would blend in, but it's, with my luck, it's probably gonna be right in the middle of something like this, and then it's going to uh, be noticeable. We are going to be putting it on the side seam of our fabric here, but it's, it's going to be, depending on where you wear it on your neck, you can tuck it underneath the other rolls and twists of fabric so it's not noticeable, or you can have it right out front and center so it's easy to get to whatever you put into your pouch. I'm gonna go with this one because I think this pink looks really good with this. I chose an eight inch zipper 
A lot of people use a nine inch one. I don't have a nine inch one. And I thought a 10 inch one would be a little bit too big. So I just went ahead with an eight inch zipper. I laid my phone down next to it. My phone is six and a half inches in length this way. So it could easily go in. Plus I could also put it in diagonally. You could put your a wallet or just a couple credit cards, your keys. You could just put some lipstick or chapstick in there. Whatever little essentials you wanna put in. Remember, you're gonna be wearing this around your neck, so you might not want it to be too heavy and pulling down on the back of your neck all the time. And then you need two pieces of fabric for your pocket lining. Now, I decided to go with these pink elephants because I thought that would be a fun little secret inside because you're not gonna see the lining of the pocket until you open the zipper. So I thought this would be just a fun little thing. It's pink to go with the project, but it's just a little bit of a novelty fabric and it just, a little bit of whimsy inside the scarf. Now my zipper is eight inches. So I made my fabric eight inches wide and seven inches deep. Now the reason for that is remember when we measure our zippers, it goes from metal tab to metal tab. So while this says that it's eight inches, it's not from here to here. It's just going to be from here to here on the inside. So if you do use a 10 inch zipper, you wanna adjust the size of your fabric to fit that. So if you only wanna have a little bit of a, a small little zipper pouch in there, just to put a couple of little, maybe just to put your keys or your chapstick in and you only wanna use a little four or five inch zipper, just go ahead and make your fabric to fit whatever you need it to fit for, the size of your zipper and how deep you want it to be. Now my fabric was larger than what most of the tutorials I watched recommended. They say basically just to go buy two yards of flannel fabric. Now that's gonna generally be about 42 inches wide. And then it's what? So two yards is 72 inches long. Most of them were agreeing that you wanna have it at least 18 inches wide by 70 inches long. That gives you just enough to wrap around your neck twice and to leave it and be a little bit comfortable and you're not gonna strangle yourself while trying to put it on. This fabric doesn't really have much stretch, just like quilting cotton won't, but if you have more of a jersey or knit fabric, that will have a little bit more stretch and that'll be able to go around easier, so if you want it to be shorter. If you already have an infinity scarf that you love, just go ahead and measure that and you can make your scarf off of those measurements. So I went ahead and I trimmed up my fabric so that it fits into those guidelines. I trimmed it so that, well, it was already, it's just short of two yards. So it's, I believe instead of it being a 72 inches, it's right around 70, 69 or 70 inches. And that's gonna be fine. Since they recommend 70 inches anyways, I'm just gonna trim it up a little and it'll be okay. Then I went ahead and I trimmed it so that it is 42 inches wide. Now you're gonna be able to get two scarves from your two yards of fabric because we're gonna cut them on the lengthwise. We're gonna split it in half so that it's going to be the 72, uh, yeah, your 72 inches this way. And then we're gonna split it in half. So whatever your width of fabric is, you're just gonna use half of that. What I did, because I'm using plaid, I decided, I kind of guessed about where it would line up together here. Now, a lot of times when you get fabric, especially if you're getting it cut at Joann's, it's not gonna really be cut nice straight of grain and even. So I chose one of the lines on my plaid. Now I'm just a little bit off here, but then I'm right good there. So I just went ahead and I ironed it all the way down my two yardish length. So that now I will have two scars. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my scissors and I'm gonna follow right along there. Now, if you're only piecing together pieces or you don't have enough, if you're using a partial yardage of something of your favorite fabrics or whatever fabric you're choosing, it doesn't come as wide as quilting cotton and flannel does, you're just gonna go ahead and make sure you have that one piece. But since I'm gonna cut down here, that's gonna go ahead and give me enough for two scars. I'm just gonna put my scissors in and I'm gonna follow along where I iron that edge over nice and crisp. Keep an eye on to make sure it doesn't roll over anywhere on me. If you don't have, if your table's not big enough and you're struggling with it, you can go ahead and just do it on the floor, do it on the kitchen table or something. We're just cutting it with scissors. I think it's cutting it with scissors is a lot easier than trying to use a, a rotary cutter and a ruler and stuff like that. 
because you'd constantly be moving it and you'd have to keep it all lined up. This way I'm just following right along the crease I made with my iron. Always flip it over and come from the other end. Now, as I said, I have two pieces now. I can make two shawls. I can make a mother-daughter shawl if you wanna do that. You can have one for you and one for your best friend, or you can have just two backups if you wanna just have two of the same fabric. Or you can just save this fabric for something else. You can also kind of consider this one your backup that if you have a little bit of a problem with the first one, that you can always have another second chance at it. If you're using something that you would consider a fancy fabric, something that's really special and important to you, maybe go ahead and pick up a couple yards of flannel first and test out the design and how it works on that first. So that when you go ahead and you work with your good fabric, you know you're not gonna make as many, if any at all mistakes. You'll already get the feel for how this project is made and you really won't have to worry about destroying or making a mistake with your really good fabric. Now, when we fold this and we're putting our right sides together, we wanna make sure that we're going to the width of fabric here, the half of it, anywhere from 18 to 20 inches. And we wanna fold that in half so that we have our long length and we have our 70 inches, 72 inches, whatever we've chosen all the way down this way. You don't wanna fold it in half the other way. A lot of people call it folding it in like a hot dog so it looks like a hot dog bun so that it is narrow on each end and long all the way down the center. That way, it actually is gonna wrap around your neck twice. If you do it the other way, it's gonna be very wide and you'll only be able to wrap it around once and it's probably gonna look a little bit strange. So that's just one of the things you wanna make sure you're paying attention to, that we're doing it right sides together and we're taking the narrow end and we're folding it together and letting it be the whole length to go down yard after yard, okay? Now my fabric is some type of a woven fabric. I don't really know exactly what it is, but there's both sides are the same. There's no right side or wrong side. All the colors match up both ways. So I'm not gonna worry about that myself. But for you, what you wanna do is you wanna do this, fold it over the long ways so that you have right sides together. So your good sides are facing together. Just kind of roughly line everything up. You have a lot of fabric that you're gonna be working with here. I've already gone ahead and I gave my whole entire piece of fabric a good pressing so that I know everything is as wrinkle free as it's going to be. We are going to create some wrinkles with it and it's going to need to be ironed again and that's okay. Now for us to put the zipper in, what we're going to want to do, some people were putting it really close to the end and other people were putting it farther up. We're going to have to sew this end to the other end to make it a continuous loop. So I figured it's gonna be easier for us if we just move our zipper up here, because once it's all sewn together, it's really not gonna matter where in your scarf you put your zipper. So I'm just gonna make sure that I'm gonna put it in the same place on both of them. I'm gonna line this up. Now remember, a lot of times things aren't cut equally on the end. This one doesn't look too bad. But this one, you see how things aren't lining up quite right. You want to make sure that we're lining things up more towards on our edges here. And then make sure we have our edge up here nice and even. Because we can always trim off the edge and we can even up anything we have here. With my plaid, I can go through and if I want, I can just go ahead and press all the way through so that I stay lined up. We can go ahead and trim up that edge later and I will even that all up when we get ready to sew everything. But for now with our zippers, I'm gonna go ahead and measure this. I'm gonna go ahead and do 10 inches from the end, which is going to put me right here. So I wanna put a pin right here on this side. You can go ahead and mark this with a piece of chalk or other type of marking device if you want. If you're gonna use something permanent, just go ahead and mark it right in the edge so it stays in the seam allowance. I'm gonna mark it there. And I'm also going to mark it 
in the same spot. I get my pin in there on the other side. And what you could also do is you could just fold this back a little bit and you could take your marking device and just mark a line right there so that you know you have them both in the same spot. This is just gonna let us line up the zipper nicely when we go ahead and stitch it in. Probably since mine is plaid, I think I'll go ahead and line up my plaid there. If you're not using a plaid or stripey fabric, it's going to be easier. I think because it is plaid, I'm gonna to want to line everything up. So I know I have it on this outside of the gray one here, which is going to put me right here. And I will just go ahead and even everything else up on the ends as I get to that point. But this way I know as it's sitting around someone's neck, even though it's gonna be bunched up and you're not gonna see all the lines converging, I will know that it's all lined up and it started out looking nice for them. Now I'm just gonna fold this up over here out of my way at the end of my table so I don't have to worry about it getting all bunched up everywhere. Remember we have this right sides together. You can choose to put your zipper either way, whether you want the zipper head up at this end or down the at end. I don't think it really matters either way. We're just gonna go ahead and put this right sides together and we're gonna line it up. Let me turn it this way just so we have something to line up with. We're gonna line this up right here. The end of our tape right here with our pin. We can go ahead and add some pins to it. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a zipper pouch and we're just gonna have all this extra fabric on both ends that we normally wouldn't have with a zipper pouch. But it's really pretty similar to the same technique. Normally I'd use zippers that are longer than needed and then I trim them. But for this one, we're gonna use it exactly the same. So we might have to fiddle and move things around a little bit with the zipper head so that we can easily sew around it. If you're already comfortable with adding a zipper into a project, cause you've been making bags with me and stuff all along, you can go ahead and add your lining piece in right now at the same time. So I'm lining up my eight inch side here. If you have directional fabric, my pretty little pink elephants are going in all different directions. But if you have it going to a certain direction and you wanna make sure that as you're looking into your little zipper pouch that you have it facing the way that you want. It'd probably be a good idea not to use directional just for ease. I'm gonna go ahead and add this in so that I can sew both of these at the same time, right sides facing. Make sure it's all lined up at the top with the other one. I've added the zipper foot onto my sewing machine. I am going with a medium gray thread. I thought about using the pink, and I thought no, because I'm also gonna be using it to stitch around the entire scarf, so I'm just gonna go ahead with that neutral gray that will still match everything and it'll be fine. So everything is lined up. And now let's go sew it. So remember, we're only going through one of our fabrics for our scarf. And we're going through the zipper and we're going through the lining fabric. I have the medium neutral gray thread in. I have my zipper foot. You can choose to sew from either this side or you can flip it over and sew it from that side. Just kind of get all of your other fabric up and out of the way so you can easily stitch it. I can go ahead and remove this pin on this side now, the one that we use to mark where we start and finish, you know, so they could start placement for our zipper. Let me just move it over here. I 
You want to make sure that you're not going to sew and hit your metal tab here at all. So you can kind of feel for where that is with your finger. And since you're using your zipper foot, you should be able to stay away from that area. The default on my sewing machine puts it at a 2.4 stitch length, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. You can go ahead and adjust it to a 3.0 if that's what you prefer. I know where to line up my fabric here from making zippers many times already, but I can also feel where that little metal tab is so that I stay over to the side. I am using a nylon zipper, so that makes it easier, so in case I do something weird, it will need to be unpicked, but at least I won't hurt my needle or anything if I hit that nylon. If you have to, just take it nice and slow. You don't have to speed through this. Just take it nice and easy. I'm kind of just holding the fabric in the back. Just it's more for my peace of mind to hold it than it is doing anything back there because all the action is happening right here at your needle. If your sewing machine has an adjustable speed, but you have a hard time adjusting your speed, go ahead and turn it down so it's not going so fast. That way, if you have a pedal to the metal situation and a lead foot, you can only go as fast as that speed control is gonna let you. You wanna try to get it nice and even. Now we're getting close here to the zipper pull, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch it just a little bit more. I can go ahead and take this last pin out. I'm going to lift up my presser foot and I'm going to turn this a little bit so that I can grab the zipper tab here and pull it. So I can slide it past where I am to the point where I've already sewn. That way it's out of the way and we're not gonna try to sew over that zipper head because there's not enough room for everything in this area. So that zipper head will force you to go off of your fabric and then you'd have it crooked and possibly not actually stitched into the fabric. Line everything back up, lower your presser foot or your machine will yell at you. Can put your zipper back to where it was there you go you have everything all stitched in that spot now we can take this and press it so that we press this top fabric away and then we flip it over and we can go ahead and press it away from the zipper or you can just go ahead and finger press it some people went ahead and did a top stitch like we do on our zipper pouches to keep your lining fabric from coming up and getting caught into your zipper. So we can go ahead and do that while we're right here. So when you take it over to your iron, if you give it a nice good press, everything should stay out of your way and your fabric should lay down nicely to each other. You can go ahead and put some pins down here out of the way to hold that fabric if you want. You can also adjust your zipper foot so that it goes onto the other side, which would probably be easier since we don't have to deal with having all the extra fabric in the throw plate of our machine. Go ahead and get it started and then just make sure everything's all lined up and nice and neat. If 
If the zipper pull is going to be in your way, just go ahead and lift your foot again, slide this down and out of the way. We turn it sideways like this so that we can easily get it past where we're sewing. Okay, now let's go over to the table and I'll show you how we're going to stitch the other side on. So we're all set. We got that one side of our zipper all stitched down nice and pretty. See how everything looks really nice there? Just like I said when we're making our zipper pouches. So now we need to manipulate our fabric back around again. And we're going to find that white pin or our markings for our other side. Wait, everything lines up nice and neat and you don't have any weird twists or angles on your scarf. Now this is the opposite side. We have the right sides up and we're taking the right side of our fabric and we're bringing it down on top. I'm going to go ahead and line this up Remember on the other one, I lined that mark up with the end of the tab of my zipper. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that again and just go ahead and move it over and park it on there. Ouch. I spin it around just so it's easier to get to this side here. I wanna lay this one down nice and neat along there. Once again, if you want to do just one one part of this at a time, you can just go ahead and pin your zipper, take that over to the sewing machine and stitch it, come back, pin your lining fabric, and then just zip on top of that again. Or stitch on top of that again. So I'm gonna put that in just to get us started here so everything stays nice and lined up. Now our fabric, we're going to put it right side facing so that the right side of our lining is going to touch the right side of our lining. We're going to make sure that we line it up so that we have the same direction. If you go ahead and cut it in a square, if you're cutting it eight inches this way, you can go ahead and cut it eight inches the other way too. That way you don't have to worry about ever getting it mixed up. You can make it deeper. As you see, we have a little bit extra space here. But I was thinking that if you put something in here, it's probably going to sink down a little bit anyway. So it's up to you if you want to make it a little bit deeper or a little bit wider. So I'm going to line this up so that this lining fabric matches that lining fabric. And then I can just slide it up to reach the top of the zipper. So everything is lined up here and everything is lined up there. Once again, we are only pinning it through the lining, the zipper tape, and the outer piece of fabric, the one that we haven't sewed a zipper down to yet. So I go ahead and add these in, and then I will bring the other ones up. So that's a good way to keep everything nice and held together, because sometimes if you try to do all three layers at once, something might shift. But if you go ahead and pin your zipper down first, and then pin your lining and all of them together, you can just bring these up and catch all three. And that way you don't, you know nothing is really shifting. So back to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch with our zipper foot right along here. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the top stitch on that one also. Now just make sure when you lay this down that you don't have any of this extra fabric underneath that everything is out of your way. I think this time I'm going to sew from this side. And the only reason I'm gonna do that is because my zipper pull is all the way over here and I really don't wanna start at the zipper pull. If I start at this end, it's gonna secure everything and keep it more stable. If I start stitching here and I need to pull that zipper tab out of the way right away, everything might come a little bit loosey-goosey and get out of alignment. And then I'll have that mess to deal with. So if I start on this side, Remember to change my presser foot back to the other side. You can go ahead and backstitch if you want, but we're gonna go ahead and sew the seam over there too, so it's not gonna be like it's something that needs to be done right away. I 
find where your metal tab is right there so you know you're not going to actually try to sew over that because you can really mess up your sewing machine not just break your needle but you can actually cause a lot of damage if you try to sew over that metal piece go nice and slow till you get past it we're doing the same exact thing that we did on the other side we're just going to stitch ride our zipper foot along there i'm watching it along the edge here to keep it lined up Make sure everything stays lined up along the top. Now I'm coming up to where the zipper pull is, so I need to go ahead and move that out of the way. Move my pins first before I throw those all over the place. Now you might have to stick your hand in this side here to get to that zipper pull. You can kind of peek in there, get it past. This is your fiddliest part really, is just dealing with that zipper pull. Everything lined back up nice and neat so we can finish this up. Make sure nothing snuck its way underneath there. Now to sew the seam, this stuff really shreds everywhere. It frays like crazy. We're going to need to kind of finagle things around going to make sure everything's out of the way. I'm going to switch my foot over. I'm just going to take this really slow. A lot of people didn't bother doing this top stitch on here. They just went ahead and left it because it can be a little bit fiddly. So if it's too fiddly for you, you can go ahead and skip that. And as you get a little bit more practice, you can go ahead and do it next time. And we're just going to take it slow, make sure everything is out of the way and we're not doing anything strange. Check and make sure my lining is pulled out of the way. Once again, you can give it a good press. So you can go ahead and pin it out of the way. And then just like before, we'll just take our zipper pull. And we'll go ahead and move it. Before you get going, make sure you've checked to make sure your lining is laying nice and flat. This lining is out of the way. I'm not going to sew anywhere I shouldn't. And just make yourself this little bit of a tunnel here that you can see where you're going. And it's really not that hard. It's much worse if you're trying to do a pouch this way. But we have enough space that we can just go ahead and do this. stitch if you want either way let's go check out our zipper let's take a peek at what our zipper looks like from the outside I we'll have to trim up some of these threads to make sure everything looks nice and neat Look at that. If we take it nice and slow, we go ahead and put a zipper in. And as I said, it looks just like if you were to have it made a zipper pouch. So you have the zipper at the top. The only difficult part is, is we had one continuous piece of fabric here. That's not something we've done before with making our zipper, our zipper bags. Let's turn this back the way we need it to be.
we're going to turn our whole entire infinity scarf through a hole in our zipper bag here. So we're going to want to leave our zipper open as we do when we're making pouches. This is where we're going to go ahead and line everything up along here. With it being a plaid for me, I'm going to go ahead and put pins in some checkpoints all around to make sure everything stays lined up. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be sewing it about a half an inch all along here down onto our pouch. We're going to leave that bottom two or three inches open like we usually do. So we're going to back tack here and stop just to make sure you really want to back stitch here since we're going to be pulling all this scarf through here. You don't want to pull out those stitches. You go ahead and break your thread and start back over here two, three inches away, back stitch again, and then we're going to stitch up here and we're going to stitch down the whole length. We're going to leave both of these ends open. We're not going to touch these at all. So you go ahead and add some pins to your pouch here. If you want, I have different colored pins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my whites to remind me as I'm stitching that I need to stop. Now, if you're afraid that you're not going to remember to stop, first of all, I've forgotten many times and I just use my seam ripper. But what you can do is you can start here and stitch up this way and that way and stop and then come back here and stitch here and stitch down the whole length that way. That way you're guaranteed not to hopefully forget because you're gonna be starting back over here. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna put a bunch of pins in everywhere to line up all of my plaids, which is just peeking underneath here. This is gonna need to have a good, I mean, look at everything, it's just constantly shedding. Just means I'm gonna line up my plaid and kind of peek it that way, put a pin in to hold it. And I'm probably just gonna go ahead and pin for me all of these thick pieces here. I really want to make sure my plaid stays lined up as best as I can. It's already lined up from when we put our zipper in. When we're stitching this, we're probably gonna need to put our hand in here. And once again, pull, let me see, if I put the zipper at the halfway point, it'll stay out of my way here. I want my zipper to sit so that it's inside my pouch, so that it stays, everything just stays out of the way. Line it up over here and do the same thing. Okay, I'm just gonna go do my pins and we'll be right back. Now I'm gonna go ahead and switch from my zipper foot back to my regular foot. You can leave the zipper foot on if you want and stitch it with that, or you could take it off either way. I, I prefer this one, it gives me a good idea. I know the distance and everything and just use it along the side of my presser foot. I am going to go ahead and shrink this down a little bit, my stitch length. I'm gonna go with a 2.0 like I would when I'm quilting, just because it's fabric frays a lot. Now with this fabric, I'm also going to go back over it and do an overlock stitch, or you could do a zigzag stitch, just to control all this fraying. So when it's washed and stuff, you don't have to worry about losing your seam and having anything come undone. I'm also going to go ahead and back stitch and back tack this here because when we stitch this all together and stuff, I want to make sure I don't tear this seam at all. This is just like straight sewing here. We're just going to go ahead and stitch along here and then it's not really complicated to sew around the pouch. It's just something we haven't done yet so far. So it's going to feel a little weird, but we'll take it slow and we'll be fine. This plaid is really nice because the way it's lining up, I can just run my zipper foot, my, my 
sewing foot right along this line of plaid and everything lines up nicely for me. Just take it slow when you're going through here. Pins. Sometimes <laughs> pins are dangerous for me. I always get stabbed by them. It never fails. Makes my family laugh. But sometimes with projects like this, I find I like a pin a little bit better than a clip just to hold everything nice and tight. I've mentioned it before that sometimes the clips, they just don't seem to hold everything as smoothly for me. Okay, so now I'm going to concentrate on this one area and we want to go a half inch past where it lines up. You can mark it ahead of time if you want. I'm just going to go ahead and eyeball it. You want to be careful where your little metal tab is. Take it a couple stitches at a time, one stitch at a time. It's okay. We're not in a race. You can go ahead and pause the video as you need to and just take it step by step. I'll hang out with you. I'm having to give it just a little bit of a guidance back here because the the foot, the presser foot, got stuck up on the metal part of the zipper there. Not that I was sewing through it, it just got stuck on that little hump. But we're going to stitch all the way down and we're going to stop about a half an inch from the end. Once again, you can mark these corners a half inch this way and a half inch that way ahead of time if you want. I know where things, because it's my sewing machine and I've used it enough, I know where it lines up. It has a little bit of a mark here on it that's hard to see, but there's a little bit of a, there's two little marks here on either side of the foot and it shows me that if I line this fabric here up with that mark, when I spin it around, I'm gonna be perfectly even. Now, technically I am not doing an actual half inch. This is three eighths of an inch for me, but that's gonna be perfectly fine, especially since I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna either serge, overcast, or zigzag on that. And I'll show you a little bit of that, but not the whole thing. Oh, look, my pin is different. I have to remember to backstitch here. And yes, yeah, sometimes I do talk to myself like that just to remind myself that, hey, you need to stop. Oh, look, the pin's different, Robin. You better stop and cut your thread and start over. Otherwise, you're going to be using the seam ripper. There is a way you can do it, but it would involve hand sewing at the end. And I think it's going to be easier for us if we just leave that little spot there and we pull our 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 scarf through the bottom of this. I keep calling it a pouch. Okay, see now right here, if I take this up and I stop those lines right there at the edge, if I got it right. I think I'm off by one. Nope. Yep. I'm off by just one little hair. I could always go back and take one more stitch. But if anyone's getting inside your scarf and measuring your little pocket to make sure it's exactly the same and you're not off by one stitch, I mean, they're that close to your face, you go ahead and pop them. I give you permission. Now we're back to the point where we're gonna pay attention to make sure everything is lined up here. I have my pin holding it nicely line everything up just so that we can sew over everything nicely and once again watching where our metal tabs are take it slow one more stitch there we go and that's going to line us back up along on this little strip and I'm going to line my foot up along the side so I know everything is good. So now I'm just going to go ahead and stitch the same way I'm going to follow my line and keep my presser foot along the edge, pull out my pins all the way to the end and I'm going to leave both of the narrow ends open. I'm only going to do this really long end. Now 
Now I'm going to go ahead and set up my machine so that I can go ahead and do an overcast along this edge so I don't have to worry about that fraying. Now since I've seen that my, my, my fabric frays an awful lot, I'm going to go ahead and do an overcast. My machine has a special foot that takes care of all of it so it has a spot to overcast. You can just do a zigzag stitch if you have a standard machine or you could take it to the serger if that's what you have. If you're just using some type of other fabric that doesn't need, you don't have to worry about it fraying, you can just go ahead and leave it like this or you can still overcast or serger seam just to be cautious. I am only going to do it on this actual plaid fabric. I'm going to stop here and skip anything over on this area of, I'm not gonna worry about my pocket over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this section. I'm gonna cut the thread and I'm gonna go to the next. I'll go ahead and show you what this looks like when we get over to the table where you'll be able to see it better. Okay, so I've gone ahead and just did the overcast stitch on this. Now there are some places where I didn't go, like up here, I didn't go directly over the edge. I just kind of scooted in a little bit. Let me show you here. It doesn't overcast completely in some places because as it was fraying, I moved in a little bit on the fabric so that I wouldn't have to, I'd still catch all this fraying in my overcast. And I just went all the way down. You can use the same thread. I was starting to run a little low on my, on my light colored gray. So I put a darker gray in just to finish it off so I wouldn't have to wind up a whole new bobbin. And as I said, I left the ends open. Now, if you used a lighter fabric that you think it might have been a little bit need of a stabilizer, some more of a silk or satin or something, I would just take a little piece of stabilizer just along here on each piece where you're going to put the zipper, just so that when you're adding that zipper in, you're getting that extra stability and you're not going to have to worry about your fabric right there. You don't need to stabilize your whole entire piece because then you'll see the difference between here and there. Just a little bit along the edge, about an inch or two inches, just whatever it is, because you're going to have your, your seam allowance, about a half an inch seam allowance, and then you're going to have that little bit extra so that it goes right down the center of your piece and then you'll be all set. Set. Do it on both sides. Now the next part we need to do is we need to make sure our ends are nice and even. I'm going to go ahead and use my quilting ruler and my rotary cutter, but if you don't have these, then you can go ahead and use any type of a straight edge ruler that you have. Line it up so that it's nice and even, and you can go ahead and make a line and then trim it with your scissors. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that this is laying nice and flat up here. Everything's nice and even. I'm gonna lay my ruler down, line it up with the lines at, at the top of my scarf here you see how much i'm going to be cutting off off of the side it's just a little bit down here but it's much more at the top because when i matched everything up to stitch i made sure i matched all my plaids up and then i'll worry about trimming off the ends after matching those plaids was more important than having the ends line up in the beginning I do that with the same on the other side That is kind of interesting though, because I have everything lined up here, but you see how it's a little bit wider down here than it is up there. But I know all my plaids lined up. So that means that when they printed this, that they probably did not print it at the straighter grain so that the printing of it is actually kind of crooked. But that's okay, because that's why we're gonna pin everything well before we're using a plaid, and we're gonna make sure that everything lays nice and flat and it's all lined up. I 
I'm going to go ahead and clean up all of my threads and then we'll get to the next part. We still have our little spot that's open here and this is where we're going to turn our scarf. But what we want to do first is we want to make sure everything is laying nice and flat. I have my seam down here at the bottom. You can have it at the top, wherever. I'm going to put my left arm in. I'm going to put my arm in from one end all the way to the other. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that seam on top of my hand. So that way I know that nowhere does it get twisted. If I go slow and I make sure the seam is always right there on top. Because we need to sew these ends up. And we're going to be able to do it this way without having to worry about doing any hand stitching. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to hold that seam right there with my hand. I'm going to pull it through, keeping it still, keeping my hand so it's still up top. And I'm going to keep these two seams together. So before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and pin or clip these. I'm going to put a clip here. I'm going to find my other side and bring it up to match. Once again, for me, I'm going to need to match my plaids. So I think plaids, it takes a little bit extra to pay attention to the stuff, but I don't think this was that bad. I would go ahead and do this again. And I'm gonna hold these two, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and pin here and here. Now we're doing this, I'm putting my clips in so that I still have this opening. I didn't close it up at all. We still need to have it open like this so it's that nice tube. But I wanted to make sure that everything is stayed nice and lined up. So if I put all my clips in now, nothing's going to change. You just go ahead and take this and shake it down on the side of the table. You can work it out this way. Get everything so that it falls down nice and neat. And what you want to do is you want to lay it down and smooth this out. If everything feels nice and smooth in there, and you don't feel any big twists or anything, then you know you've done it right. I have my seam that lines up all the way there. Mine feels a little lumpy bumpy, but it doesn't feel actually like twisted or anything like that. So now we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch all the way around here and we're not gonna leave any openings. We're gonna stitch the whole thing closed. I'm gonna go ahead and take you over and I'm gonna show you the two different ways that you can do this. And once again, I'm gonna to need to overcast it to make sure everything stays good. But I think if for me, I should add some extra clips in here just to hold all of my plaid spots together nice and neat. Because I pinned on all of these pink ones here so I may as well go ahead and clip on all these wide pink ones here. I'm just lining up the front and the back to make sure it's nice and even. If you're just using regular fabric, you should be all set. Just do the thing where you put a clip on each end and then you grab the center and those two clips match there. So then you can put a clip here and clip there. And then when you know you're perfectly even, you can always add extra pins and clips all the way around if you need to make sure everything stays together and doesn't move on you. Now with my sewing machine, I can remove this table right here. This slides out. It comes all the way out. And I always leave the table on so there's usually some dust and stuff floating around back there, but this allows me to have a free arm. So I can take and put bags or the hem pants, which I don't do, or projects like this. I can just put this over here so I have the bottom underneath and I have the top here. And that allows me to just stitch all the way around without having to worry about anything. Now the majority of your machines have this, so you should be able to just go ahead and put it in there Remember to switch back from when I was overcasting. There we go. So I can just go ahead and put it on there and I can just stitch around like this. But if your machine doesn't have that ability, maybe you're working on one of the older machines from like 
the different singers that sat on top of the table and didn't have that free arm. Or I don't know whatever sewing machines now might not have them. But you can also still do it this way. You're going to sew from the inside. You can start from a seam. You can start wherever you want. It really doesn't matter too much. You're going to put your foot in the side inside of it. Which is still the wrong side because we're inside out. But in this little bit of a circle. You see I hold this out of the way. Then I can just go ahead and follow this around. I just have to keep this under control. And I can follow that around. And still stitch my tube. Just make sure that this doesn't get in anywhere and it stays out of the way. This process works good too if you have a small tube that won't fit around the arm of your sewing machine. You're going to have to do the same process anyway. Now when you get to here you can go ahead and have one of your seams going one way and the other going the other way. Mine seem to want to go this way, so that will be fine. I'm just going to match them up on the inside. So once again, everything looks nice and neat when we're done. Now, based on the way I'm seeing this, I have a feeling with all the hard work of getting all the plaid to line up, that it might not line up in the end, but we'll see what it looks like on this seam. If you chose not to pull your scarf through your pocket and you sewed up that whole bottom, you would need to leave a three inch area here so that you can pull your scarf through it that way. Then you'd have to go back through afterwards and you'd have to go ahead and do a ladder stitch to hand stitch that closed. I'm going to go ahead and overcast this and then I'll show you how to flip it the right way out. I've gone ahead and I stitched all the way around. I did the little overcast thing. Now I need to get all of this to come through this hole in the bottom of my little zippered pocket here. I'm just going to grab the zipper. I have my fingers in here and I'm going to grab the zipper and I'm just going to kind of move that head down a little bit more so that my pouch is uh, all the way open, my pocket's all the way open and it's not, I have more room to move. Okay, just kind of go in, grab it. You don't want to force it too much. You don't want to tear your stitches here, but that's why we went ahead and back stitch there and it's like one of those magician's things. You just keep pulling the scarf and you keep pulling and you keep pulling. And eventually it'll all be through. Let's double check to see if we got it twisted anywhere. This is my seam right here. This is my seam right here. Go ahead and pull it and look at that. Did not twist it. Oh, you know, it's always nice when things work out the way they're supposed to. Now, the only thing left, other than pulling off all of my threads, look, I did pretty good here also. It's almost lined up nicely. It's not too bad. It's going to be twisted around your neck two times, so it's not going to be something that's overly noticeable. If you were way off, but having this one be off just that little bit, it's not going to be noticeable. So I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to bring these corners up just to make it easier to sew. You can take this over and give it a good press. I'm just going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a finger press. And we're going to take this back to the sewing machine and we're just going to go ahead and do a little eighth of an inch right along the edge. I've shown you everything else, so I'm going to go ahead and take you back and show you one more thing. Now I do have the experience of having made numerous dozens and dozens of pouches. It's possible I've 
come up to about 100 pouches at this point. So this part was quite easy for me, but I think even if you were just beginning and this was your first project, I think you'd be able to go ahead and slowly walk your way through. I'm just picking out little threads because there's always something that's sticking out somewhere. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and fold this in here. So our last step is just closing up this pouch. Just go ahead and bring those seam allowances in. As I said, you can go ahead and you can go ahead and iron it or finger press it, put pins or clips in it. I've gone ahead and I've slid my needle. My machine allows me to move my needle all the way over to the quarter inch mark. I'm just going to go right barely along this edge. I'm just going to do about an eighth of a stitch, an eighth of an inch of the stitch. I went ahead and changed my thread to a pink just because of the color of my pocket. I'm going to start just before where the hole begins. That way I know I'm not missing any of it. I'm gonna let my needle and my presser foot hold my fabric in place. I'm gonna go ahead and align this again, make sure that I don't have anything going like this on either side, that they line up nicely over here. I'm gonna hold down here where the end of it is. You could put a pin down there. And I'm just gonna go slow right along that edge, catching all the seams, all the pieces. continue past where the hole began, back stitch, and cut my thread. That's it. So went ahead and stitched up the end. Everything's nice and neat. Just go ahead and tuck your pocket back in. Kind of push down the corners just a little bit so it lays nicely. Zip it up. And there you go, you are all set. You have your infinity scarf. There are videos out on YouTube on how to wear them. You're basically going to put it around your neck. You're gonna give this a twist and put this back around your neck so that you're wearing it like this. You can have it to wear, where's our zipper? Here's our zipper. So you can have it so that the zipper is on top for easy access, or when you put it on, you can fold it so that the zipper is underneath so that you don't see it and you just see your beautiful scarf. Now, since you bought two yards of this and we split it down the lengthwise in half, now we can have twinsies. So I went ahead and made this one with the fun pink zipper. You can make the second one with a gray one. So if you have twins, best friends, cousins, sisters, each person will know which scarf is theirs. If they get laid down anywhere, you'll know that you're the gray and that your cousin has the crazy pink one or anything like that. However you wanna go ahead and set them up and use them. I think that is a great way just to carry a little bit of extra something so that you don't have to carry a big purse with you when you go out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this over to my pressing station and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nice press. And then it'll be all set to wear or to give. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below. Thanks for hanging out with me in the craft room today. So if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit the like button down below. And if you enjoy seeing videos like this, please subscribe. And if you ring that little bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I put up a new video. I do a Whip It Wednesday video where I show you whatever I've been working on in the craft room during the week. And on Fridays, I put out a tutorial. So thanks again for hanging out with me and I'll see you next time. Bye.